family, thank you so much for joining me again today on our No to Grow series. Uh, we've been doing a special No to Grow. This is our third week and our final week talking about the blessed life. Again, we are into August and August is kind of when we start school fresh for us at the church is the beginning of our church calendar year. Um, and for a lot of us, we want this year to be different and you don't have to wait till January for your year to be different. Uh, we've been talking about some very practical things that you can do uh, that will help you live a blessed life, that will help you start this year off with no regrets and start this year off this year being different, this August being different. Uh, and so two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the importance of dedicating that first day of the week to the Lord, that Sunday. We talked about being together corporately in worship, and we also talked about the importance and biblical basis of small groups. So I would encourage you two weeks ago to go back and watch that video. Last week, we talked about the uh, importance of spending that quiet time with the Lord, of having that devotional life and what that looked like and what it's like to have a devotional life. Today, I want to talk about a subject that we don't always talk a whole lot about in the church, but it's very scriptural. Um, and I believe it leads to blessing. I've personally uh, seen God bless and move in my life. But I want to talk to you today about tithing and giving um, and biblically the significance of it. Um, as with all of our videos, if you're watching them and you have questions, I always encourage people to pause to look up scripture. Um, but if you have questions beyond this video, we would love to have a conversation with you at Redemption Point. Whether you attend Redemption Point or not, you can always reach out to us and we just want to connect with you and give some information information and resources and put those in your hand. Um, so I want to look at Malachi 3 and 10. Um, and so again, we don't always give, we, uh, we always want to give God the first tenth of every dollar. And when you look at the word tenth, that's where we get the word tithe. Uh, so Malachi 3, 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in my house. Test me in this and say the Lord all says the Lord Almighty and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Uh, I love that word floodgates of heaven. Open up heaven's floodgates. I don't know about you, but I want heaven's floodgates opened in my life. I also think it's important here that the word of the Lord says, test me. This is a time where the Lord says, Test me. Just try it. Just try it and see. And if if you've ever struggled with giving, if you've ever struggled with giving a tithe or 10% of what you bring home to the Lord, the word says, test him. Um, I would encourage you to test it. Try it for a season and see if God does not miraculously move uh, in your finances, if God does not uh, bless your home, if he doesn't bless your job, your business, whatever it is. See that the Lord is faithful and that the Lord will move and bless. Um, we do this. We do tithing for several reasons, but we do it not just because God tells us to, and we do it as an act of obedience, but we also do it as a way to show that we trust the Lord. God is asking us to obey him. And we're saying that, Lord, I trust you. Uh, we're saying that we are going to give our first fruits, that very first thing that comes into our home we're going to give that to you. We're going to honor you. We're saying, God, you are more important than food. You are more important than shelter. You are more important than anything that this money can buy. You are more important. You are first in my life. And it's something significant. And I'm telling you, it will increase your faith when you start saying, God, you are first. You are first in my life. You come before bills. You come before Anything else in my life, you're number one. And I am obeying you because I want to demonstrate in my life that you are more important than anything else. Proverbs 3 verses 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Uh, not only does this show our obedience to the Lord, and not only can we uh, show and demonstrate our trust 
for the Lord when we give, but it also draws us closer to the Lord. Uh, now, we don't believe that tithing is in just in the Old Testament, but it's also clear in the New Testament. This is a principle of scripture throughout the Old and the New Testament is that we are to give, we are to tithe, um, and we are to believe we're, you're to be a cheerful giver. Um, I know there are many times in my life where I have given and uh, there may be a need. I know uh, I shared this at our church, but this year in 2023, uh, Pastor Travis had us do a first fruits offering. Um, you know, the Lord spoke to my husband and I very significantly that we needed to give a significant offering. Uh, now, it may not be a lot for everyone, but for us, it was a very significant amount. Um, but we said, okay, God, we're going to trust you. We're going to honor you. We went into our savings and took some money out because, again, we knew the voice of the Lord and we knew that we can't outgive God. So we took uh, that money and gave it in. And I will tell you, within a week, the, we got a phone call that we were not expecting and eight times, eight times the amount that we gave was given back to us. And it was just so amazing to see the faithfulness of God because we were obedient in giving and we were obedient in what the Lord was speaking to our heart. And because of that, God honored that sacrifice and God blessed us far beyond anything that we ever expected. And I can tell you story after story after story. I don't have enough time to tell you all the times that God has moved in my life financially, and it has been 100% related to obedience in giving. Um, I want to read Matthew 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Growing up in the church, I often heard the phrase, you know, you show me your calendar and your bank account, and I'll tell you where your treasure is. And that's so true, where we spend our time and where we spend our resources financially, those are the things that we care about. Um, and so, you know, if your treasure's in things, your heart's gonna be in things. If your treasure's in your boat, your heart's gonna be in your boat. If your treasure is in traveling, that your heart is gonna be in traveling. If it's in your house, treasure's in your house, your heart's gonna be in your house. Um, I, w I don't know about you, but I want my treasure to be in heaven. I want my treasure to be uh, in the things that that God would have for us. I want I want my treasure to be in the to be in heaven, um, and I want my heart to be there. Um, and so again, it's important to give consistently. First uh, Corinthians sixteen and two says, "On the first day, again, we talked about the first day in an earlier session. On the first day of every week, set aside some of what you've earned and give it as an offering." Um, and again, you know, I think that we we have to be careful not to get too legalistic. Um, but I think, you know, if you get paid every week, you should be giving every week. If you get paid biweekly, uh, give biweekly. If you get paid once a month, give once a month. Uh, I don't know that the timing so much matters as the consistency. Um, it's important to be consistently obedient. And again, this is a scripture where the Lord says, try me, just try me, just test it out and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and do something incredible. Um, Psalm 116 verse 12 says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? How can I, another translation says, how can I repay the Lord for all of his goodness to me? First uh, Chronicles 16 and 29 says, give the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Uh, I'm going to read a lot of scripture today. Psalm 96 and 8 says, Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Uh, Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Tithing works. God does bless. You can do more on the 90 than you could do on 100. The Lord can move and bless and benefit and benefit your life. If you want to have a blessed life, you need to be a giver. Uh, it is scriptural. It is biblical. And again, this is one of those scriptures. I know I've said this over and over again, where the Lord says, try me and see. Uh, Psalm 37 and 25 says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Again, I don't have time today to share all the testimonies um, about how the Lord has blessed my life and I'm sure your life and the life of others 
through giving. Um, I hope that you'll go back and I hope that you'll rewatch this series. Uh, we talked again two weeks ago about giving God the first day of every week. We talked last week um, about giving God the best part of every day. And then today we talked about giving God the first tenth of every dollar. And again, that's how we uh, are going to have a blessed life as we start this year. Um, and again, you can maybe go back and maybe some of you may be watching this at different times. You may be watching in January or later in October or we're in the month of August now. But whenever you're watching it, let me encourage you that you can start today. You don't have to wait for school to start. You don't have to wait for January uh, to set a resolution to have a life with no regrets, to live a blessed life. But these are clear biblical principles that we find in scripture that let us know how we can live a blessed life. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or need any additional information, we would love uh, to provide that to you, uh, whether you go to RPC or not. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. I hope you have an incredible day, and I hope that you are following these principles so that you can live a blessed life. Have an incredible day, and God bless. Mm -hmm.